We're affected by how we feel. First, we're affected by what we know and the decisions we make. Second, we're affected by attitude. How we feel. It's how you feel about the past. You gotta have a good attitude about the past. Use it as a school, not a club. Don't beat yourself to death with your past. Faults, failures, losses. Let the past be a school, harsh school maybe. Let the past be a school master to teach you. Not to threaten you, but to teach you. Next, it's how you feel about the future. Set your goals. The promise of the future is an awesome force to affect your life every day. Without a future well designed, we take hesitant steps. Appreciate all of this stuff with all of its ups and downs, with all of its mystery of why it works and sometimes it doesn't work. Don't challenge this. You don't have to ask for another planet. You don't have to ask for another country. Just ask for another book. Ask for another idea. The formula for failure, a few errors in judgment repeated every day for one month, starts the weakness, starts the disaster process. You can imagine what happens in six years. Now here's the formula for success. A few simple disciplines practiced every day. And you've started a whole new process called a whole new life. A few simple disciplines practiced every day. What am I not doing that would be easy to do? That could greatly change my health, my wealth. What am I not doing I'm neglecting that would be easy to do? If you'll start that process, eliminate the errors and replace it with disciplines practiced, I'm telling you, you can start this process of life change immediately. After today, you don't ever have to be the same again. Only by choice. You say, well, the country's messed up. That's like cursing the soil and cursing the seed and the sunshine and the rain, which is all you got. Don't curse all you got. When you get your own planet, you can rearrange this whole deal. This one, you got to take like it comes. So number two is attitude. Here was number three, activity. This is the work part, the labor part. Taking action. The activity is the miracle working piece. A miracle being something we don't quite understand how it works doesn't mean it doesn't work. It means we just don't quite understand how it works. Miracles work. You don't have to rub a crystal and sleep under a pyramid. This stuff's too easy. Getting rich is too easy. Changing your life is too easy. Forget all that. Come on, this stuff's too simple. Just simple, easy stuff. But if you neglect it, that's how it piles up year after year. If you're willing to straighten it out, Here's one of the keys. It's called activity. It's called disciplines. Turning wisdom from your philosophy and inspiration, the strengthening of attitude, and faith, and courage, commitment, and all this stuff that comes from attitude. If you're willing to take these two qualities, philosophy and attitude, and invest it into activity, you can have a miracle. Anything short of that, no miracle. Wisdom doesn't perform a miracle. Attitude doesn't perform a miracle. The only thing that performs a miracle of increase called equity is called putting wisdom and attitude into discipline, into labor. And this labor now can perform a miracle. And here's the two parts to the labor. One, do what you can. Number two, do the best you can. Can't give you better advice than that. Could, should, don't disaster. And if you'll just start the process of change, could, should, and will, you can start this whole process. And if you will then put it into action, the miracle belongs to you. Time is more valuable than money. You can get more money, but unfortunately you can't get more time. If somebody asks you to spend your money, that's pretty easy, right? But what if somebody asks you to spend a day, right? You got to think that over carefully. And I know you did. I wouldn't waste one of my days, not for anybody, not for anything. Once I understood how valuable they were, I don't waste any. And who knows the mystery of inspiration? Why some people are inspired and some are not? Some things I don't try to figure out. I take the simple approach now, right? 
Some people do and some people don't. I mean, that's about as profound as my philosophy is. Some go for it and some don't. Some change and some don't. And if you've been around for a while, you can usually work out the numbers, right? Out of 10, you know, three do, seven don't. The ones that do, the ones that don't. You say, well, why don't the ones that don't, how come they don't? We don't know. I just leave it as a mystery. I used to try to understand all that. The guy says, this happens to me, this happens to me, this goes wrong for me, and all this stuff goes wrong for me. How come all this stuff happens to me? I say, I don't know, it beats me. Uh, the best I've been able to figure out is those kind of things always happen to people like you. I mean, right? That's the best I got, I don't know. I'm an amateur on this stuff, what do I know? Why would somebody mock and laugh? Easy explanation, they are the mockers and the laughers. What else would you expect them to do? I used to be so naive, I used to say, well, liars shouldn't lie. See, how naive can you be? Of course, they're supposed to lie. That's why we call them liars. They lie, they lie. And you just have to leave it that way. Why? Because that's the way it's going to be. Here's what locks up the doors and the channels to receive more cynicism. That locks you away. That prevents you from learning more, being a cynic about the past and the future. Cynic about the marketplace, cynical about the people, cynical about the institutions, cynical about the setup, cynical about yourself, cynical about your chances. See, that locks away all the chance for stuff to flow your way. Don't be a follower, be a student. Don't be a follower, be a student, right? Take advice, but not orders. Take information, but don't let somebody you know, order your life. Make sure what you do is the product of your own conclusion. Make sure what you do is the product of your own conclusion. Not to do what someone else says. Take what someone else says, process it, think about it, ponder it. If it makes you wonder, if it makes you think, then it's valuable. Then when you go take action, make sure that the action is not what somebody told you to do. Make sure the action is the product of your own conclusion. The learning process can be speedy, swift, powerful. Your learning curve can go up and then applying it to your business, your life, your family, conversations, equities of all kinds. Philosophy, to form our philosophy, you gotta think, you gotta use your mind, you gotta process ideas. And this whole process over a lifetime, starting way back here when we were children, schools that we've attended, our parents, our experiences, all this stuff that we've processed by the thinking process helps to develop our philosophy. And in my opinion, each person's personal philosophy is the major factor in how your life works out. Now, I used to think it was circumstances that ordered my life. I threw all that old excuse stuff away. Some people found it though, and they're using it these days. My old list. I used to blame the traffic, the weather, I used to blame circumstances. Right? People say, I'm too, too tall, I'm too short, I'm too old. I was raised in obscurity, raised on a farm, parents of modest means, all the stuff. So I figured that, you know, my future was gonna be tied to what everybody else was arranging, the economy, and, right? Interest rates, I used to say things cost too much. That was my whole explanation, not my philosophy, until my teacher taught me better that this is where the problem was, my own personal philosophy. Here's what's exciting about each person's personal philosophy. That's what makes us different than dogs and animals, and birds, and cats and spiders and alligators. That's what makes us different than all other life forms. The ability to think, the ability to use your mind, the ability to process ideas and not just operate by instinct. But this one I had to struggle with, personal development. It was hard for me to give up my old blame list. It was so comfortable blaming the government and blaming my negative relatives and the company, company policy, unions, wage scale, economy, interest rates, prices and circumstances and all that. That was difficult for me to give up. That was quite a transition for me to make and blaming myself. It's not what happens that determines the major part of your future. It's not what happens. What happens, happens to us all. He said, the key is what you do about it. It's not what happens, it's what you do about it. And he said, if you will start that process of change, 
Do something different the next 90 days than you did the last 90 days, like picking up the books to read. Do something different like the new health disciplines, relationship with your family, whatever it is, doesn't matter how small it is. If you'll start doing different things with the same circumstances, since we cannot change the circumstances, but we can change ourselves. We can change what we do. What you have at the moment you've attracted by the person you've become. What you have at the moment you've attracted by the person you've become. Few little simple principles here. Once you understand these, it starts to explain so much. Now, sometimes it's a little tough to take blaming yourself instead of the marketplace. Taking responsibility instead of putting it off on someone else. Those, that transition sometimes is a challenging mission. And this one was a little tough for me. You've attracted, up until now, you've attracted the things to you because of the person you've become. Now I said, well, how can I change all that? If you will change, everything will change for you. You don't have to change what's outside. All you've got to change is what's inside. To have more, you simply have to become more. Don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems, wish for more skills. Start working on yourself, making these personal changes. And he said, it'll all change for you. I want to get better and better. I want my craft to get better, my business operations to get better, the things I do to get better. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Once I got that, it turned my life around. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Work hard on yourself and develop the skills. Work hard on yourself and develop the graces. Money, no problem. Economics, no problem. Future, no problem. If you just go to work on the right thing. Not get things out there to change. Don't try to change the seed. Don't change the soil. Don't change the sunshine. Don't change the rain. Don't change the mix of seasons. Let the miracle of everything that's available work for you and start working on the inside. Work on your philosophy. Work on your attitude. Work on your personality. Work on your language. Work on the gift of communication. Work on all of your abilities, and if you'll start making those personal changes, I'm telling you, everything will change for you.